Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of the .NET Show, we'll explore how to implement a list as a bindable property and also to handle updating a selected item. For this feature, I've written a class that inherits observable collection of T and implements a selected item property. The class handles synchronizing the data between the list and the selected item, which makes our job so much easier. We'll also take a look at using the validation feature of bindable properties to provide a more robust UI experience when things don't go as planned. Finally, we'll implement a refresh method on the XAML component, which we can call after we've changed properties on our plain vanilla model to force a UI update. And that's all coming right up on the .NET Show. So I'm starting with a brand new project called Bindable Properties in Maui, just like we did in episode 39. But I'm not starting with that code because this is going to be a little bit different. Now, one thing I'm going to do in this demo is set the window size and position with this code right here in app.xaml.cs. So this is really only for Windows. I have a giant screen, as you might know from seeing other episodes. And so what this does is it sets the width and height and centers it. And this is the current state of the art for doing that in a Windows application. It doesn't actually show up on the screen in the wrong place, and it just shows up right in the middle of the screen. So kudos to the team for figuring that out. All right, we're going to create our model. So this is a person class. It's a plain vanilla model with an ID, first name, last name, and date of birth. I've only exposed the setter on first name so that we can set a breakpoint in there just to show that the binding is working correctly. All right, so the goal here is we want to create a component that shows a list of persons or people, and we're going to expose that list as a bindable property. Now, we also want to be able to select an item in the list and edit it. In order to do that, I ended up creating a new class. Observable collection is the obvious choice, right? Observable collection of person. But I want to encapsulate a selected item inside that observable collection itself. So I ended up subclassing observable collection of T and then adding a selected item property of T. So I created this in a class library called AVN Observable. It's also available as a NuGet package. And so if you go to my GitHub repo for AVN Observable, you'll see the class library itself and also four demos, one for Blazor, one for Maui, not using bindable properties, one for WPF, and one for Windows Forms. I want to show you this code here. The class is called Observable Collection with Selection. I'm subclassing Observable Collection of T. And I have some code here to handle this selected item. Here's my selected item property, my public property. And I've got two events, one for selected item changing and for selected item changed. This happens before the change. This happens after. I also have this hash code. And this is going to help me identify the selected item in the collection. Because here's the story. When you update the selected item, the collection needs to know that it also has changed. And so this is how I implemented that. My getter is pretty simple. If my selected item is null and this, which is the observable collection, has items in it, I'm going to set selected item to the first item. Now, notice that I'm calling the setter here, capital S, because the setter is what does all the magic here. So if the value is null, return. I actually had a situation where that happened. So you don't want to do anything with a null value. And if the selected item has changed, in other words, if it's not the value being passed in, I'm going to call this magic method here, update selected item in collection, which I'll get to in a minute. 
I have a private Boolean updating that I set to true here and false here when I'm done to prevent re-entrancy, because that can happen. All this stuff you have to think about, right? And I don't want to have to do that when I go to do some basic binding. So then I'm going to update the value. Then I'm going to save the hash code of that value. Every object has get hash code. It's a unique integer. Then I'm going to call on property changed with selected item. And then I'm calling my event to raise item changed. Now you notice item changing isn't explicitly called right here, but it is in this method. Update selected item in collection. So let's go look at that. So here's where my Boolean is for updating to prevent reentrancy. And if I'm already updating, I want to return. Then I'm going to set it to true. If my hash code is not equal to zero, I get the last item from the list where that hash code matches. If it's not null, then I get the index of that item in the list and I replace it with itself to trigger the update. And this is just a little trick that I learned. You're not replacing one object with another object. You're basically setting the object to itself and then raising the changing event. Now this is going to raise the collection changed event when I do that. This right here is my explicit selected item changing event, right? I haven't actually changed it here. I haven't set selected item is a value. That's happening right up here. So here's where I'm calling selected item changing. I have these wrappers, these virtual methods for on raise selected item changing event and on raise selected item changed event. It's a good pattern for raising events in a class. So now that we've seen that, let's add the NuGet package to our project. Install package AVN observable. Boom. Now I'm going to add a new XAML component. And this component is going to utilize that observable collection with selection as a bindable property. So let's add it. New item. And it's going to be called person list component. Dot XAML. So within a scroll view, I've got a collection view. I've set the selection mode to single. I've bound the selected item to person collection selected item. This is going to be our bindable property. And the item source to person collection. Then in each item in the list, I'm binding to first name and last name. And then I have a little editor down here where I have entries and a date picker. And those are going to be bound to person collection selected item property name. All right, let's add code behind personless component XAML CS. So I've got this person property changed handler here. If we go back to the XAML, you'll notice that I'm handling the text changed event with that person property changed. And I'm calling update selected item in collection whenever we change that. That's just a simple way to do instant updates as you type. Here's my bindable property, person collection property. And remember, this is the backing field for a property. So here's the actual property, person collection, of type observable collection with selection of person. And then I'm just passing that through to the bindable property. All right, now let's change the main page to just simply show the person list component and I've named it person list here. That means we have to change the code behind. So here it is. The first thing I'm doing is setting binding context to the person list and the person list has that person collection property. So I'm creating a new observable collection with selection of person and initializing that with three person objects. And now I'm handling these events, even though I really don't need to in this demo. Selected item changed and selected item changing. I'm just showing you how to do it. And using the dispose method to unhook them. All right, let's run it. 
All right, so initially, Carl Franklin is the first item. So if I just go down here and start typing, you can see that it's immediately updating. And when I select a new item, that all works nicely. And get this. Boom, I still have a clean model and the binding is working. All right, now let's talk about validation. So even though this use case that I'm going to show you is pretty simple, it'll demonstrate how to add validation to bindable properties. Specifically, we're going to display a message if the collection hasn't been initialized with any elements. Otherwise, we'll display those elements. So we can add a simple validation check to our bindable property, which is here, by utilizing one of its overloads, which accepts a validation function in the validate value parameter. So the first thing I'm going to do is add another string property, validation error message property, and a validation error message, which is just a string. Then I'm going to implement the function to actually do the validation. So is collection valid? And here's the signature. It needs the bindable object, the view, and the value as an object. And so you can do whatever you want to do in here. And you're going to return true or false. True if everything looks good, false if it doesn't. And I've just implemented a rule to make sure the list has at least one item in it. Otherwise, I'm going to return false, and that's going to actually throw an exception. Now here's how we hook this up. I'm going to go up to my person collection property and add this validate value. And I set that to is collection valid. Now, since we have this validation error message property, let's bind that to a label. Let's do that right up here. So we've got a validation label right there and it's bound to validation error message. Now, remember I said it would throw an exception if the validation failed? Well, this is where it's going to fail, right here. So we're going to wrap this in a try catch and just ignore the exception. Let's make sure it still works with items in the collection. And it does. Now let's comment these lines out. No items in the collection. There you go. Collection should be initialized with at least one item. Well, so far, we've done a good job of updating our person model via the UI. But what happens if our code changes properties of the person object? Will the UI be able to reflect the changes? Let's experiment. I'm going to change this main page to this. And all I've done here is created a stack layout. And inside that stack layout, that's where I put my person list component. And then I've added a button with a button clicked handler that says click me. So let's implement that handler. And this is a good spot. So I'm going to use code to update the selected item of our person collection set the first name to Joe, the last name to Cool. Now before we run this, remember to uncomment these three lines. Now let's see what happens. Hey, nothing happens. Well, I wonder if the model actually changed. So let's put a breakpoint here again and try it again. Yep, the model changes. It's just that the UI isn't reflecting those changes. This is the trade-off of having a completely clean model. If I implemented I notify property changed, it'd be a different story. But here's how we can get around it. Let's go over to the person list component and we're going to add a method right here. Refresh. So here we're calling our person collection update selected item in collection, 
All right, that's for the selected item. And then we're going to call on property changed for the person collection property. And that will update the UI that shows the collection. Now, all we have to do is here, add the code to call refresh. Now let's try it. All right, this is my selected item, the first one. And now, boom, Joe Cool changes here, changes here, it's changed in the model. And if I select another item and then click it again, that guy changes to Joe Cool because I changed the first name and last name. So what do we learn today? Well, we explored the AVN observable library and used it to create an observable collection with selection of T, which enabled us to notify the binding system when a selected item in the collection changes. And we added that observable collection with selection of T as a bindable property on a component. Then we added validation, ensuring that our data is validated and displayed correctly for a more robust and user-friendly experience. And finally, we added a refresh method to the component so the code can tell the UI to update after it changes properties on the model. And that's my demo today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.